COVID-19 has ground the world to a halt, and its dangers are amongst the very worst in people living with type 2 diabetes, a growing global population of more than 460 million people. COVID-19 has disproportionately affected people with all types of diabetes. We know there's an association with body weight, with obesity, but also with, uh, with overall blood glucose control. There's still a huge unmet need for treatments that are really able to affect the underlying causes of diabetes. We have a lot more choice and a lot of agents and a lot of agents which actually seem to not only lower blood glucose levels, but actually help overall health and uh, protect the heart and kidneys. But even with its advances, we still need more in terms of innovative therapies to, to manage blood glucose control and overall metabolic risk in, in diabetes. For decades, researchers have been trying to better understand the mechanisms behind type 2 diabetes and the signaling pathways behind its damaging inflammatory effects. Discoveries like that of the incretin hormones by Professor Jens Yule Holst pave the way to possible new treatments. Many years ago, we were working with, with, with the gut peptides and nobody knew what that was. It, it took quite a while to get people interested in this, but I guess uh, after the demonstration of the power of the incretin hormones in, in insulin release, uh, it was easier. The main problem in treating type 2 diabetes has to do with the mechanism of development, the pathogenesis, the pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes. I think we are, we are, we are looking into a future where pharmaceutical uh, therapy of, of obesity and type 2 diabetes is, will be much more successful. One possible approach to diabetes treatment is to look at the TRIP-V1 receptor. TRIP-V1 is a receptor expressed in neurons that are innervating the pancreas, and these neurons are known to inhibit insulin secretion. In principle, if you could relieve that block, it would be possible to set free more insulin. And um, that's what you can do with a TRIP-V1 antagonist. Developing this is the goal of Pila Pharma, a clinical stage pharmaceutical company based in Malmo, Sweden. In one of the first experiments in my um, PhD work, uh, I suddenly stumbled over that this uh, chili receptor or TRPV1 may have a role in diabetes and it has never let go of me, me since. Based on years of research, Dr. Graham has formed the vicious circle hypothesis. TRIP V1 positive neurons are found in the whole body, including insulin sensitive tissues, such as liver, muscle, and adipose tissue. In healthy subjects, insulin keeps blood glucose levels in the normal range by regulating glucose uptake in insulin sensitive tissue. In obese tissue, inflammatory cells accumulate and can secrete mediators that activate TRIP. V1, triggering the release of vasoactive and pro-inflammatory mediators, substance P and CGRP, that can inhibit insulin release. A vicious cycle of inflammatory windup is proposed to contribute to type 2 diabetes pathogenesis. The introduction of a TRIP-V1 antagonist may break this vicious cycle to improve insulin secretion as well as insulin sensitivity and blood glucose control. Pila Pharma is currently at phase two of clinical development for a novel first-in-class proprietary oral anti-diabetic product candidate. It's a drug class that has been studied in, in the area of pain management and inflammation, but not previously in diabetes. A clinical study where the administration of the antagonist from Pila Pharma has actually resulted in an increased insulin response in, in people. The early clinical trials seem to show that it's certainly well tolerated by people with diabetes, but also suggest that it may have an action to improve glucose handling and probably by affecting insulin secretion, so increasing insulin responses to glucose. That shows that our molecule works the way we thought it would work, but there are still a lot of missing links we need to study going forward. Next step will be to do a longer phase 2 trial, phase 2b, and then look at the resulting effect on blood glucose. This is a completely novel mechanism of action. It's working in a, in a new way, 
And importantly, it seems to be not just targeting blood glucose levels, but also has anti-inflammatory actions. TRIP-V1's role in inflammation may also impact the exaggerated inflammatory reaction sometimes caused by COVID-19, something often linked to increased risk of hospitalization and death, especially in people with diabetes. There are possibility that if you treat an inflammatory process early on, you might, as an add-on, get lipid control, body weight control, cardiovascular function, control, and so on. So we hope to be able to demonstrate that going forward. This is oral therapy. Potentially that could reach a lot of people who at the moment are struggling to get access to, for example, some of the injection therapies that are difficult uh, to, uh, to roll out en masse across the world. There's still a large part of uh, diabetes or uh, diabetic patients that don't have access to good treatment and I think with this molecule if we get all the way to the market and I hope so then we could actually make a real difference for these people. I hope that we can inspire uh, basic researchers to investigate this field more, to unravel more and I hope that um, some uh, clinical scientists will feel inspired and maybe contact us if they want to be engaged.